What's up, everybody? This is Nick James for Buds, Bros, and Superheroes. Thanks for tuning in to episode 10. Number 10. Uh, if you are a first-time listener, thank you so very much for tuning in. Our name is what you're going to be getting, Buds, Bros, and Superheroes. But it's the day before Halloween, so we're also going to have a bit of a fun Halloween time with it. If you're hearing the intro music now, it's a little bit different. We went for something a little bit spookier. It's not going to be all the time. It's just going to be for this one, but the entire <laughs> episode's going to be a little, a little spooky, kind of, not really, a little bit. Anyway, a little, episode a little ten, a little something, something. Episode ten, double digits now, Jack. Can you believe it? No, I cannot. Number ten. If you uh, didn't watch one through nine, check them out, please. And be sure to, if you do like them, share it. You know, word of mouth is the best thing for podcasts. So if you like it, just be like, hey, you should listen to this podcast. That would be nice. That's it. We're not asking for much. I don't think so. If if you just want to sit and listen, though, your audience is also absolutely appreciated. Thanks for tuning in. We're actually going to dive pretty much right into it this week so you can see what's going on. Let's talk about some stuff with Buds. Yes, yes. What do you want to talk about first, sir? Uh, You had something prepared for last week that was very interesting, but we ended up talking about finding new plugs. And it kind of got pushed away because the episode would have gone too long. So I would like you to take over this entire section for the most part and just go on and tell us this. I, it's interesting. It's very interesting. So stay tuned to like, I'm going to shut up, man, because I talk too damn much. <laughs> no, it is it is interesting. And I don't know too much about why, what I'm about to ask. Like why, when you have plants, marijuana plants outside, when there's a big, bright, full moon, how come your plants don't hurt me from that? And versus when you're indoor, whether you're in a tent or you're in a room or a factory or whatever, it's got to be completely dark. There can't be like a pinhole of light. Why is why is it like that? Like why you have a whole moon shining over your whole crop, plenty of nights, but then there's one little pinhole and it could just ruin your whole crop with seeds. Just want to break that question down a little bit for anybody listening who wasn't too sure. So you said a word and it's Hermie, and we don't we're not talking about the Greek messenger. We are talking about a hermaphrodite. So these plants can either grow as males or females, and what Big is saying is in these two stages, in the second stage, as it's starting to produce the buds, it needs complete darkness for twelve hours. Right. Or that sort of seeds will pop up and there's no male plants it doesn't need a male plant it could just form the the seeds on its own just from the light and i just i want to know why not moon why not the moon why just little pin lights or little light leaks why why that's what i want to know you know um people all over the world grow weed outside like why doesn't your shit hurt me out there with this with the moon you know yeah, so again, going back to it, like Hermine and all that, it needs this certain amount of darkness. Because if it were to get any light, then it can hermaphrodite itself, in which it would then pollinate itself. It would then start producing seeds. All of this is not good. So Big's question is, if you're growing inside and you know, you're know you awake when they're supposed to be asleep and you open your door or you open the tent or you open what you're growing in for even a second and a little bit of light gets in, that can also cause these plants... To to Hermie, as we're talking about. Yet, they sit under the moonlight for how many hours at a time, and it has no ill effect on it. None. It's an interesting question to pose. I do know that we have uh, a few listeners out there who are growers, so I'm really hoping we can get an answer and then get some audience discussion. In. Scotty. Scotty the Ghost. Pretty Talk to Scotty. me, Scotty. Scotty the Ghost. Scotty. Few House Farms. Shout out, man. Shout out to you guys, man. Why does that happen, Scott? My theory is, and this is for all the nerds out there, is that Princess Yue is a fucking pothead. And she's like, I'm not going to harm them. I'm going to give them what they need. Who's Princess Yue? So it's this awesome thing. <laughs> Avatar The Last Airbender. Okay. The water benders, or people who can bend is what they use, manipulate water. And the first one to do it was the moon. And they oh, watched okay. the moon push and pull the tides, and that's how they learned to move the nice, water. Nice, nice. In this story, the princess was almost dead, and the moon spirit was like, here, take some life. And now she's alive, and then in the ver- reverse, in the episode, the moon spirit's dying, and she's like, take this life back. So the moon spirit and her are one and the same. 
So, yeah, I mean, so please, if anybody's listening, let us know in the comments. Um, I have another question. I want to know why our dispensaries keep running out of weed. It like, is. I, it's, it's a thing. Like, I want to know if people out west know how to curve that because some for some reason, and I'm not knocking the growers out here, like the grow labs and the grow facilities or whatever. I'm not knocking them, but they should have more of a consistent harvest yield. Yeah. harvest yield going through. Like, there should be something coming in there every week. Especially if you team up with another company, and you stag, you're, you're you're staggering your grows. You know what I mean? Like, so like, work on a PA. I mean, they had articles and everything about how there was droughts in PA last last year around this time. It was terrible from October until January. It was a real drought. So correct me if I'm wrong. Because it's federally still not legal you can only produce marijuana in the state that you can then prescribe it medically so we're not getting weed from different places it's all grown right here in right pennsylvania here. by law by law i mean we like don't know else. what really goes on but yeah it's just i don't understand maybe they're not big enough it was more supply than than they or more demand than they thought supply and they just didn't grow as much. Maybe they're not as big. Maybe they're just getting started. Something, but they need to pick it pick it up. It's been two years, plus two years, I guess. Right That's around. what I was just going to ask. Like, awesome. Like, come on. Like, you know what I mean? Like, So months? for two years, they've had a model of how much yeah, you should be demand harvesting. there is. Yeah, that harvest should be coming in. Put Big Body up in the grow, man. I'll show you how to get that harvest in ASAP. Have you actually looked on Indeed? No. You there's jobs for that. I should check it out. You should check it out. I, I was thinking that. The only thing that I didn't follow up on is I didn't know where all these places were. Okay. And though I could have very easily just opened Google Maps and figured it out, I just was going through. And I just like to keep up on it. I'm not yeah. looking for a new job. But it is just, it's nice to see and nice to look at. Yeah, there's a there's a place right five, ten minutes from here, not even. We'll see what's up. We might have something going on anyway in the in the future, so we'll see what's up. No, I hear you, but it's 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 again that's supply and demand. You should you should know. I wonder if though, and the thing the variable in which we're not accounting for and that we don't know is how many patients have come up. If yeah. patients have tripled and they only have amounted to double, that's exactly what's happening. And if that's what's happening, PA, you need to let more. Uh, grow facilities you, you should allow more grow facilities because they only allow a certain amount it's not if you have a whole bunch of money oh let's just open up a grow facility i have an entire That's, warehouse correct right. no like, they limit no, the amount of yeah, plants they, right they limit it and they need to open it up a little bit maybe double it because we smoke it's a helping a lot of people it's getting out there it's, it's doing exactly what the model of california in my opinion has shown us of like there's no crazy criminal activity going on since it started. Right. You know, nothing has really changed that status quo. And if anything, the taxes have just got to be helping crazy. tremendously. Because, again, you know, it's it's they're selling out. So uh, I'm sorry to keep kind of going back to this, but I do like to keep in the back of my head, like, there might be one listener who has no idea. So when right. you get your card, you can go to a facility and they will sell you marijuana. Usually before you go there, it's nice to look it up on the Internet and there's a full menu. Lately, when you've been going to this menu, there are no strands. And that's at all five dispensaries in that this we area. live around in this area. Man, I would like to figure that out personally. Is there a way? Like, how do you get your license to be those people? Like, if we got a facility, could we produce weed for the state of Pennsylvania? Yeah, but it costs a lot of money. And here's the thing from what I'm understanding. Like, you give $10,000 for the application to hope that you get picked. And you don't get that 10000 back. That's just the application fee, if I'm right. I'm going to look that up because that would be yeah, interesting for the next episode of the Bud Section. Because I would like to know that now that that, uh, now that, that seed's been dropped in my mind, I want to follow that to the end of that rabbit trail to figure out, like, what a cool job that would be. Imagine just walking into a facility and just weed. I know. That's another thing to the people that are listening out there on the West Coast, in the Midwest, down South. Like, our dispensaries, you can't see any weed. When you go in there, everything's 
behind it's it's like a bank like like there's a glass wall and you get your you get your weed in boxes and containers and your vapes are in containers there's you're not smelling nothing you're not opening containers and looking in and no there's none of that you get what you get in those packages and hope it's fire <laughs> you know and again for anybody who's not too familiar with what we're talking about i have been west and bought it like big's talking about like I think it's cool. One of my favorite parts is like in the West when they show you weed, they also put a little magnifying glass next to it. And they're like, yeah. look at that. And it's like, whoa. And then right. they have it. And I'm sure this has changed because of COVID. But pre-COVID, like it was in right. a jar that had a little slide on top that would like let three little slots open. And it's like here. And they'd shake it and like smell that. And like you can actually look at it and stuff. And the other thing that I miss about the West Coast and buying from places like that that I, I haven't found here is pre-rolls. Yeah, no, they're not doing that either. None of it sucks. No edibles? No edibles. Not that I fuck with edibles. I think I talked about it in a previous episode. Like, I won't ever go down that road again. But I do know some people like to go down that yeah. road for medicine. Like, again, yeah. that's it's medical marijuana that we're doing in PA, Jack. Right. So I can't believe that we don't have every facet of it. Especially when eating it is such a different effect. Way different, as we talked about. You're right. Yeah, that was a you know. Oh, yeah, no, that was just a bad time, Jack. I just kind of made a face when you were like, oh, it's got a different effect. I just, like, I rolled my eyes like, yeah, it fucking does. Because <laughs> I was there once, and I was like, I have to leave this table. Yeah. That was a bad time. Speaking of bad times and Halloween and horror-ish, you know, do you have any quote-unquote horror stories with weed? And again, we're not talking about, like, getting sold ounces by Freddy Krueger or having Jason Voorhees, like, hey, do you want a dab? No, we're talking about, like... Mine was going to be, I filled a bowl the other day, or I ground a bunch up and dropped it. Okay, well, yesterday, just yesterday, I was down to my last joint, my last joint, and my son had the little table he was eating his lunch, so he had the little table that, he, that I like to roll my weed up on my tray. So I put the tray on the floor in front of me instead. I only had a joint, so I end up taking a drink, and I went to stand up, and I stepped on the little bit of weed that was on the tray. And it was all in my effing sock. And Dang. I rolled that shit up, Jack. <laughs> Hell yeah. I rolled it up and we smoked. Hey, I wasn't letting that go. No. We scraped that shit right off my sock and we smoked. It's funny because the sock is also the answer to what I was talking about. If you ever drop weed that's already ground, put a sock, a clean one preferably, over the hose of your vacuum... Push in a little bit, make it a little concave, and then for extra support, if you can't, if you feel like maybe you can't hold it, put a rubber band on it. I can just hold it, and turn it on, and vacuum, and it'll collect on the top of the sock. <laughs> you turn off the thing, you empty, you flip out the sock, and it's saved. And now it works. You gotta go through it. I live in a house with dogs, so we had to pick out some dog hair, Jack. And some people on here are going, "Oh God!" But that's. That's the life sometimes, you know? You drop it, you pick it up, you make do. Yeah, I might have caught cancer yesterday, but it's okay. We all die one way or another. I don't think you can catch it like that. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> um, shout out to 151 crew. That's my old friends. We had a little crew back in the day. We weren't a gang. No, we didn't shoot guns and all that. We did steal baseball cards from other kids and slice baseball cards to make them in again and resell them to baseball card stores before they had the little card things that measure them and all that stuff so we were doing our thing as, as, as young kids we like girls and baseball cards and money we didn't sell drugs we didn't do none of that we just baseball cards and girls one five one big up i want to name everybody in the crew uh we got pretty tone money mike eli we call him dre day tj and that's about it, man. The 151 crew. Shout out. Is that who this is dedicated to? Yeah, we're dedicate we're dedicating this to the 151 crew, yeah. Nice. Yeah, when I grew up, I had like two really, really close friends. We kind of drifted, and then I was in a band for a little bit. I wouldn't say we were a crew, though. I don't know. No, I've never really had a close-knit friends like that. Until now, Jack. Right. Yeah, man. We linked up. Now we're cool. Live right around the corner from each other. That is nice. Could borrow a cup of sugar or a butter too if needed. 
They come over to my house. I come over to theirs. It's cool. I'm glad to meet you, brother. My girl dog is in love with you. That's okay. We call it. As she should boyfriend. be. All these bitches should be in love with me. No, let me stop. Yeah. She's so <laughs> funny, though, man. Like, she's a. When she thinks someone's coming up, she's a. Her. <laughs> and then when she sees it, you. And then when she sees it's you. Her butt just goes into overdrive, man. You would swear like a little helicopter. She could just fucking take off and shit. And then you come in and yeah, it's so funny. A lot of their butts be shaking when body comes in the building, Jack. No, I'm funny kidding. Stuff. I'm kidding. People, I'm just having fun on here. Chilling. I'm glad to be doing this podcast. I'm glad you guys are watching. And thank you for putting me on this. Thank, thank you for doing it. It's 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 not a small challenge. It's not something to ask lightly of to like, hey, you want to do this with me? Because it's a lot of time. And yeah, but so, I love it. Good. That's why I'm here every week, man. You know what I mean? We're doing it, right? You don't hear me like ducking you and oh, we'll do it tomorrow, okay, bro? Mm -hmm. What can we do it on Thursday? I know you gotta edit it on Friday, but look, mm -hmm. no, nah, nah, no, I nah, did that nah. shit to you once. Yeah, but you, you had it going, bro, you had a lot going on. One of the biggest parties in the neighborhood ever, yeah, I, ever. Bounce houses and strippers. No, there wasn't no strippers. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding, people. It was bounce, a nice bounce house. My son was in it all day with all these other kids. Plenty of food, plenty of drinks, a lot of people. Could you imagine being the stripper showing up to a party, though, and, like, there's also a bounce house, and you're like, In <laughs> interesting, okay. And what, what's going on? Well, I would probably. No, I'm not getting into that. Yeah. So yeah, I, uh, that'd be weird. By the way, we kind of slipped into the bros section, where we kind of bullshit a little <laughs> bit more freely. I don't know if I played the song yet already. The editor Nick will figure that out later. Slip but anyway, um, do you watch The Office? Never. Never. So we're from Northeast PA. Scranton means a lot to both of us and shit. A lot of the dispensaries we visit in Scranton, like we know Scranton pretty well. In the show, there's only one stripper who keeps coming back, and it's the same girl. And I saw a meme the other day, and it was like, what, does Scranton only have one stripper? And I was like, maybe. It wouldn't surprise me. Look, I there's one stripper, and I'm not lying to you. I know, I know of her, but I know her son really well. I'm not going to say no names because I don't want to be disrespectful to them, but because he's a real good friend and stuff, but... and. She's always walking around. Like she's probably out there right now walking around. For years. Like she's in her young sixties. If she's fifty something, fifty eight, fifty nine, I'm giving her a couple years. I mean her son's my age. And I'm a young forty six to all those out there. But yeah, she's he was a year behind me in high school, so he's probably forty five. Even if I say forty four. And she had him when she was 15, 16. She's 60. She's an old hoe. She's one of them 70 hoes, 70s hoes. <laughs> she was out there. <clears throat> look, <laughs> to those who remember Lackawanna Ave back when Lackawanna Ave was the track, she was out there during the track. When I was first born, she was out there. She, I'm going to stop. Let's continue. Let's continue. I don't know how we move on past something like that. Like, <laughs> Dude, I wasn't even a kid. No, you weren't even, no, thought about being a kid, no. No, I also just realized the gap, you know, I, I knew you were older than me. I didn't actually ever do the 16 years. 16 years, That's bro. That's crazy. That's another reason I really like this bro section, and we've talked about it, kind of expanding on it, just getting to, our perspectives are so different. Oh, yeah. You know, if it wasn't just for the 16-year gap, the fact that we grew up in two different states, and the fact that we grew up with two different ethnic backgrounds all together like all three of those are just going to line up for so many differences that will be fun to kind of go through because i've never heard of a 70 year old stripper from where i was from like you'd never see a 70 year old hoe walking around i mean not to my knowledge I, but she, I, she's not 70 right now she's 60 sorry she's 60 something i believe let's just say 60 that's oh like Look, people, if you're in anything on the streets, man, look, be a square. And when I say square, I don't mean no disrespect to people that are just doing the right thing because that's what a square is. You're doing the right thing. You're doing what, you know, you're, you're, you're working. You went to school. You, you got a job, kids and family or 
You know, you're just doing the right thing. You're not doing any kind of dirt, you know. So what I'm getting at is there ain't no benefits with the streets. There ain't no 401K. There's none of that. So when as you start getting older and you can't walk as fast, run as fast, whatever you're doing, sucking dick as fast, working in a chemical factory, whatever it is, like you got to retire at some point, no matter what it is, basketball, football, boxing, you have to retire. And when you're on the streets, like I said, there ain't no retirement, nothing, no, no, nothing. So remember that if you're out here hustling and if you're young and listening to this and you're selling drugs and all that, they're like, chill with that because you might make a hundred grand in a year, but if you get knocked and you're doing 10 years for that, you do the math. You'd probably be better at McDonald's, Jack. Drop that's, some knowledge. Yeah, that's damn. That's, you're right. Is it really worth the risk there? Is it worth the risk? I got a friend who just did three years. He's showing me all this shit he had and they took it all, took it all. It wasn't the county versus such and such. It wasn't the state versus such and such. It was the United States versus such and such, which means he had the same people that wanted John Gotti, Frank Lucas, Al Capone, the United States versus my friend such and such. I said, dude, you got nothing now. Now you're looking for a job. You got nothing. But just three, four years ago, you were living the life that most think is cool and it's not. You know, I, I did that same stuff young, just being young and dumb. Oh, well, I, I found out, though, there's no none of no retirement or any of that, you know, so here we are. I mean, I worked and shit, too, but the streets ain't where it's at, especially as you get older. You mind if I take a left turn? No, not at all. Do you think it's possible to be addicted to fast food? Yeah, I'm addicted to a lot of different fast foods. I just just say no <laughs> but yeah i think you could be like i me, i'm addicted to fast certain fast foods for like a month then i go to the next one for like two three weeks to a month and it's bad yeah no me i i think i'm addicted to mcdonald's really yeah dude you just said you could work at mcdonald's and i was like i could work at mcdonald's like <laughs> i could eat a big mac every day of my fucking life and i'd be cool with it See, I'd get fired from McDonald's because I'd be in there putting like three burgers on the same sandwich with cheese in between each layer. I'd probably catch another heart attack. You know what I mean? Oh, for yourself. Be, yeah, lunch be, and shit. yeah, they'd be like, what are you doing? You're eating all the apple pies. <laughs> Why do you have a milkshake again? <laughs> That'd be me too. <laughs> You're in the bathroom <laughs> eating fries, dude. What? <laughs> they just see you walking what from you the fry thing yeah, with the yeah. giant basket just into the bathroom just like i'll be back who's bag of whose bag of fries is that like what yeah no. sitting flipping the burgers using the vent chef <sighs> to like put your weed out when i tell you i'd have a five patty big mac without crunchy lettuce crunchy water lettuce. or crunchy water AKA lettuce. This guy gets a Big Mac with no lettuce, guys. No lettuce, people. It's fucking extra weird. cheese, no lettuce. I don't mind anything extra, but there's a fucking jingle. There is a promotion. There is an ad. Two all beef patties, best sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun. If you don't get all of those ingredients, you don't have a Big Mac. Oh, you have a Big Mac. There's an extra. There's an extra. <laughs> yeah, you got a Big Mac. Mac. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? But, yeah, I, I can't eat crunchy water unless it's just a straight salad with some nice little, you know, if it's got the right stuff in it, like hard-boiled egg, and I like that, and a little bit of onion, cucumber, and stuff like that, green pepper, blah, blah, blah. Protein, but, but, like meat? Uh, chicken. Chicken. I don't mushroom. mind chicken salad, turkey, or um, tuna. I, I, don't, I, 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 I don't mind that, but I'd rather just a nice salad. Not, not, I don't really care for meat on it. It just has to have, like, hard-boiled eggs. I like salad with hard-boiled eggs in it, so that's cool. You know what I mean? I do. I enjoy uh, hard-boiled eggs as well. I remember once I went to this place in New York City. I was at my friend Roy's uh, place there in Brooklyn. We went to a place that was, like, a, if you're around here, Red Leaf. If you're no. back from where I'm from, it's Salad Works. Where it's basically the subway of salad. Like, you walk through and you're like, let me get that and that and that and that. And they're like, okay. And then you mix that shit up in front right. of you. And, like, all I wanted, I'm pretty sure all I got was just, like, straight crunchy water. 
Okay. I don't want the leafy shit. I right. want Brachiosaurus. I don't want the food that my food normally eats. But like crunchy water is cool. I'm pretty sure all I put in it past that was chicken breast and uh, <laughs> hard boiled eggs. Sorry, it's taking me so long because now I'm Definitely. remembering and I'm trying not to giggle mm-hmm. through it. And then I was like, yeah, and I guess just some Russian dressing. And he makes this, <laughs> and this guy mixes it together and he's done and he looks down at it in such disgust because <laughs> all of it's white, you know, yeah. like it's a little bit of white. And he's like, this is what you want. And I was like, yeah, that looks good. And he's just like, <laughs> Uh, All right. And I've never in my life had somebody make my food for me and have them look at it like, is this like, what you this want? Like fucking puke. Is this what you want, bro? Are you sure about this? And Roy also thought it was really funny. And the whole thing. Yeah. Now that uh, I'm really remembering it. Oh, I'm sure everybody heard the octaves go up in my voice as I'm trying to fight back the giggle. But it's one of those ones where like your cheek hurts. Yeah. From yeah smiling yeah, yeah. so hard. Like that's I love little memories that. I didn't plan to tell about that. I didn't plan to talk about it, but it just came out of nowhere and one of those bright little spots you have. So here, here's my problem with the crunchy water at McDonald's, right? In places like Burger King and McDonald's and all that. Like, a lot of young kids work there. And if you open your Big Mac up and look at the lettuce, I don't like soft, warm lettuce. I just feel like they don't care about the lettuce and it just sits like everything else sits and I just, it's gross. Like, you know, if they're going to put it on fresh, maybe I, maybe if I get it made there fresh and boom, bang. But if it's just, if the lettuce is not crunchy, I can't mess with it at all, bro. Oh, I would for sure say some of the best McDonald's I've ever eaten uh, was on break from school. And I actually went to a McDonald's, went in a McDonald's, yeah. and they served it to me right there. Yeah. And then I went like to Ate it right there. Right yeah. there. Because I think that some of the patty is still too hot, and you put it in the box, and then you put it in the bag, which has the open fries. And if those are really hot, the bag basically becomes a sweat trap. Yeah, and then and that bag sweats it. on the box, and that box becomes a sweat trap. And yeah, by the time, you, you know, even home. if you're a little bit away, right. you're going to get some weird brown lettuce. Yeah. I can see what you're saying. Yeah. We went the other day. And those fries were the hottest fucking fries <laughs> that I've ever... They must have literally just put them in the bag. Like, just straight... Psh, like, fryer, bag. thing, salt, bag. Like, quickly, though. Like, quickly did it. Because they were piping, piping out. Thank you, McDonald's. Yeah, that was great. Because they could have been terrible, but they were the fucking truth. That we went to Spirit of Halloween looking for a Hocus Pocus Billy zombie... Funko Pop, no luck. Probably going to have to get that off Mercari. If you like Funko Pops and you haven't head over to our YouTube channel, like I just put up a, a vlog of that. There's a few uh, hundred in there. You might yeah, like yeah it. just a few. Just a few hundred people. Come it's on, funny, man. Like, that's people being... I follow who have more than me. Look, look. So when he first sent me the video, right? I said, nine minutes? I said, oh, yeah. He got a whole bunch of them. A whole bunch of them. And it's not slow, right? No, and it wasn't. That's my point. Like, it wasn't even like you were taking your time bullshit. And, like, you were trying to explain each each thing and not be so long. I tried not to explain that many for a while, yeah. But you have that many, and it's real cool to show a collection like that because people like me don't, on the average, don't see stuff like that. You know what I mean? Um you got all kinds, man. You, I'm looking at some as we sit here right now. I'm looking at like 15 of them just right behind your shoulder. And that's not even up in the collection. In the museum. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a museum, bro. I was thinking about doing like the rest of it. You know, maybe a full 360 of the office because I feel like I got some other cool stuff in there that wasn't. You do. I like it. I saw this other one. It was a, a restaurant. And imagine my office times a million, but it's a restaurant. Okay, cool. And I was like, damn, that would be the type of restaurant I open because A, I can tax right off all the cool shit I buy. And B, I could display it and like my wife right. can't get mad, you know, like, Nick, do you really need a 10th lightsaber? And it's like, it's not for me. Right. It's for the restaurant. It's for you the know, restaurant. We needed an ambiance around the entire thing. So, yes, now I have track lighting. And it, that's my fucking idea. Holy shit. I'm going to shout this out. Get it to a uh, scum and villainy. That would be cool. I've been there before. And not that it's dark, but it could be a little bit brighter. 
put some lightsabers up around it. That'd be cool. It's this bar in L.A., and it's uh, called Scum and Villainy in Star Wars A New Hope, the original. Okay. When Kenobi is taking Luke to find somebody to fly them through space, they stop at Mos Eisley Spaceport. And as he's describing it, he says, you'll never find a more wretched hide of scum and villainy. So this started as a pop-up bar, and as to not get slapped in the face by Lucas and now Disney, they didn't call it Star Wars Bar. They just kind of lightly said it's scum and villainy and made it look exactly like this cantina. And I go there. I went there recently this past summer because Mark Bernardin and Kevin Smith do Fat Man Beyond, a live podcast there. I was like this close. Nice. So, I want you to do me a favor. And the people out there, talk about our new characters that we're getting made. Talk about your character. It's I actually could, pretty perfect for Halloween episode, yeah. I think You're it's brilliant. Pretty, <laughs> I just think it's pretty cool, man. It is. I never had nothing that like up. that going on. Yeah, shout out to Dropper. I, I'm not even 100% sure how to pronounce his first name in real life. It's E-S-A-U. Anyway, go to E-S-A-U. F I G U E R A O. Because there's just a lot of vowels in there. Figueroa. Figaro. Figaro. S U Figaro. But we just all called him Dropper. Why? I don't know. There was some sort of backstory, but he played it real cool and he's like, ah, don't, don't, don't. Yeah. So I don't know why. We've talked about this one. Anyway, he is an old friend from my Joe Kubert days. Um,. Just fucking amazing. I was just telling my wife about him. One of the first assignments that Kim DeMolder, shout out, amazing, amazing person, right. amazing artist, great teacher, Kim DeMolder, had us do, was just like, show off. I don't, okay. I don't know you guys, you don't know me. Like, let's do, if I'm not mistaken, it was a double splash page. So a splash page in comics is one whole page. And a double is when you open up, it's one image over the two through the mm -hmm. binding. And you don't get a lot of them in comics. Even though, like, when people get into comics, when you look at most people's portfolios, all they do is draw a double splash page because the narrative part of it is so fucking hard, believe me. Anyway, I'm sorry I'm talking so much. He killed it, and I still remember it to this day. When I close my eyes, I could see it. It's this Batman piece where, like, the Bat family is curving around the right picture from bottom to top right, but not a lot of them. It's a lot of two-third accord head pages there is a lot of batman but anyway the real kick-ass part is almost all the v batman villains take up the other side of it nice. so he's been leaps and bounds above crazy skilled and oh. i wanted him to uh draw our logo for us well he's hooking it up please talk now i've just talked yeah. for so long our, our characters are like you're gonna i hope you can see it one day soon my character's big body bigs the can of pimp He's a pimp, and he's standing there, and uh, he's got his hands kind of open with a joint in the one hand, and then we got Slick Nick, the editor. He's like a Wolverine type of... Hold on, uh, no, we're going to stop. No, okay, I want to go back to you. Back it up, then. Because the other cool... So you've got your hands open. You're looking fucking awesome in your pimp suit. Did okay. you notice, so like our name comes down almost like an upside-down rainbow, so it slicks the bottom, but it still curves, and it's made out of smoke, that smoke is coming from your nose. I, I noticed You're blowing the smoke, smoke out I didn't from know your nose. That's then magically through, like the power through your hands. Okay. See, I didn't understand that. Remember, I, I texted our letters. Was, when I texted you, I was like, I don't know if I like that because I thought it was just. Zoom. I didn't realize it's smoke actually. You know, which is dope. It's smoke, and yeah, it's your quote unquote. You know, again, shout out to this fucking guy dropper. I can't. I told him he wants weed powers and Dropper very respectfully was like, can you elaborate a little bit more? I don't smoke weed. I don't, I don't know much about weed. Like it's just not what I That's do. What can you, said. yeah. <laughs> can you like, what, what are weed powers? And I said, That's a really good point. Drop. Um, definitely want some glowing eyes. Like if they're red, because you know, potheads eyes are usually red, but maybe green, you know, I just feel like let's keep stuff green and like maybe some Kirby crackle big comic book fans will know what that is but like instead of little zeros like maybe pot leaves like he just took everything in and made this thing that's amazing yeah it's and coming out dope. i am like a kid on christmas all year round i am the <laughs> worst impatient person at receiving things that i want 
if I order something on Amazon, I'm Scott Pilgrim sitting in front of the door. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I'm not trying to rush him. That's not what I'm saying. But I want to show this to people. But I also want to wait until it's done. Yeah, because then only... once it's done, I have the process saved from every. Thing. You know, the other great part about working with him is the professionalism. You know, he gave us three ideas for poses and really yeah. small thumbnails. And we were like, we really like this one. Mm -hmm. Then he gave us a rough of that one. He said, what's up? And uh, I'll go in and I'll talk about my character for a quick second. I'm, uh, like he said, a Wolverine, beast, werewolf kind of mode. And it's so cool because you're so big that I'm kind of like leaping off of your back. Like, yeah, which over was a the shoulder. crazy detail I couldn't ever thought of. Like in terms of <laughs> composition, it's amazing. But in the original, I was straight werewolf. But this this is cool. I mean, it's only what the it's not the actual ink. We didn't do any of that. Like he didn't do the uh The latest one we got is pencils. We are now in the completed pencils phase. So that's three steps in. We had three thumbnails, one rough. And now one finished pencil, because the finished pencil also has the background elements to it. Our faces yeah. are defined. So I was saying, like, when he first did it, I was straight werewolf, like, Underworld. If you've ever seen Underworld, like, really a wolf-man hybrid, almost like a minotaur kind of looking thing. And I said to him, uh, what I was having in my head, which I didn't explain to him first, which I probably should have, but he asked for notes, and I said, I'm sorry, but in my head, I was kind of going more for... A Michael J. Fox Teen mm -hmm. Wolf kind of thing is how I thought it was going to be. And then as I was looking up Teen Wolf, they made a Teen Wolf television show. I remember that. I didn't, didn't watch it. I didn't watch it. I don't I don't really even remember it going by. But they also had a cool look that was, you know, like if we're going to talk about it, Michael J. Fox was PG. This was PG-13. I said, find a place in between. You know, I want to look badass, but I don't want to be snarling so yeah. hard that you can't tell it's me. Right, right. And he fucking hooked it up so good. Like, again, I, I want to show everybody, but I at least I, I want it to also be finished. But sitting here looking at it, teasing it right now, right. it's just that. It's even teasing for me to be like, oh, I want to show it. But, yeah. Head on over to his page and like it. He just started recently doing more vlogs. They're bilingual. It's a lot of fun. Oh, that's cool. like I'm saying, he's uh, in Mexico, so he does a lot of uh, bilingual stuff. Yeah. And just watching him draw, you know, I tune in a lot, not only because I'm a fan, but like it's to me, it's calming just watching him go. I like how the headphones are hanging or like down in the corner and the microphone's coming down. It's oh, yeah. Tight, man. I like I like the trench coat they got your boy in. You know, well, he, not they. Yeah, nice, I asked for nice. a moderate background with this, and, like, I wanted it to be, like, we were standing in a recording studio, and instead of that, you know, he used talent and technique to make it look like it's blowing up around us, like it can't even hold us and our podcast yeah. in it. Like, yeah, it's he's a fucking brilliant dope. artist. Big up to him, man. So as the time is going, I'm sure you'll see that by the end of November. I don't think it'll take him that much longer, because he's been... In my opinion, working hard, very, very quickly. Yeah, I can't believe working how hard, quickly man. it's been coming out. And I don't. I want to knock on wood. And again, if you are listening, a thank you. B, not trying to rush you. I can't believe how quick it's going for the quality in which it is. Like, dude is a machine. And he, again, that's how he's. He, I always remembered him at school. You know, a lot of people were there, and we had a lot of fun. And it was a lot of work to go to that school. I could see this on a t-shirt, a hoodie. Big banner, oh man! I could. This is just. I'd dope, put this on a bro. flag. Yeah, I'm not even kidding. This is hot, hot. So be on the lookout for that. Follow us over on Instagram and Facebook so you could see it. Shout out, Dropper, fucking killing it! Can't wait to show the yeah, world. Yeah, shout out. Thank you so much, so much. So Appreciate you, bro. Again, that's a lookout for us, buds, bros, and superheroes. Brand new poster of us in our superhero poses and our superhero forms, if you will. What a perfect segue to talk about some superheroes. Yes. For those hanging out for a while, you know that superheroes are kind of my thing, not so much Mr. Big Body. So I'm trying to get him into superheroes through movies because movies are my other thing. It's like superheroes and movies are always fighting it out. So superhero movies are just amazing to me. I like them all, basically. Um, this week we chose, in my opinion, a dead fucking ringer. Bro, I don't know. If you didn't like this movie, I don't know what to do for you. I don't... Maybe episode ten's the last episode because you you didn't mind Green Lantern, but you hated it. 
I hated it. What did you think of this? Well, I'm not going to sugarcoat or fake the funk. I didn't like it. I don't like Batman. I, he's too miserable for me, bro. I know you're like, come on, dude. This is the best Dark Knight. This is the best one. Some of the scenes were good. Like, the action scenes were dope. But, like, him as a superhero, I don't like him. The car was cool. I don't know. I just... Thumbs down, bro. I'm sorry. That's crazy. Keep it real, though, <laughs> so that's good. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Like, I'm not always... Being that I'm not a big superhero guy, I'm not always going to dig certain characters that you people out there might like. But some of the actors were cool. cool. The the, the uh, acting was... It was all right. Like, what's his name? Morgan Freeman. I don't know about his part. And I like him, but... I didn't like him in this. I didn't like his part. Anybody could. You didn't played. like Lucius Fox? No, not really. I mean, I didn't like. I don't know. I just I couldn't. I couldn't. I had to rewind a couple parts, and it just I could. It didn't hold too much of my interest to really be into it and really remember this and remember that. That's the problem I had with it. It was so long. You know, it was like two hours and thirty minutes. I think something like that. And I just pretty long. Yeah, and when you have to go back because you, you lose interest, and in, because my attention span ain't that ain't that good, so watching a long movie that I'm really not in, interested in from the start. All right, I feel you. I feel you. Okay. You know, I think I mentioned it once, and it's a quote I like about being a peach, and some people just don't like peaches. So, in my opinion, yeah. Batman's a great peach, but you just don't like peaches. Yeah. It's Doesn't mean I'm not going to stop shoving peaches down your throat for the yeah. remainder of this episode. <laughs> The remainder of this episode and this whole series, you know, because, like, I need to know, what if you like Ben Affleck? Right. You know, so we need to watch Batman v Superman to Working. see him in there. You know, he's he's a, he's not the whole thing. He's just a little a little bit in there. So you might like that element more. Well, if you want, we can make that next week's movie. We could we could try and, you know, see if we could. Uh... It's quickly becoming the DC podcast, and I don't mind it. <laughs> if we want to go through all that first, like. That's cool. It's just going to make the second half of it the Marvel podcast or the other podcast. Like, eventually, if we just keep burning through one, it'll leave less variety, which will then make a block of it unlistenable for others. Like, let's just say there's people out there who hate the MCU. I can't think of anybody right now who would listen to this who hates the MCU. Nobody coming to mind. These imaginary people I'm thinking of, we'll call them like Daniel and Nelly. They might not want to listen to those. And then if we get a whole block of them that they're not listening to, and they're just an example, these imaginary people, uh, Banyo and Nelly. But that's why I was trying to separate it. But, yeah, we can always, I can always do more DC. Mm. Honest, too, if we really want to go for it, fuck it. We can f- say, like, full DC, and we can watch, like, The Adventures of Lois and Clark. Like Smallville and Flash on TV, like no, 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 no. just movies, just, just movies, just straight movies. You don't think that you'd do better with like a forty-minute episode or something? Probably. Like you could watch the first episode of the Flash and be like, okay. Probably. Yeah, that's what I mean. So maybe, but anyway, we will get back because there are some Marvel ones that I think you should watch because they might hold your attention. All right, because so again, look. they're made a little <clears throat> bit. So you look. know, it's the fast food of comic book movies is marvel okay well so look this is what we'll do it's my pick right or no dude we lost i lost count a while ago so why don't we why don't okay why don't we do it like this you pick out something a, a, a superhero that you think i never seen before because this way i can't be biased this week because i kind of feel like i was a little biased towards not never liking batman ever so watching his movie was tough because I, I don't like him. So now I got to ask, because I'm sure it's being tossed about. Like, what did you think of the Joker? He's a villain. He's just a ba- another bad guy. You know what I mean? I didn't really care. Nothing for him about either. Heath Ledger's performance, like particularly made you like, wow. No, not really. Interesting. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, sir, that is your. <laughs> I'm that's sorry, why people. We're doing this. Yeah, I'm just being honest. So. I want you to pick out, right, a superhero. It could be an hour long. It could be a cartoon. Someone I've never seen, 
or someone you think I've never seen. Yeah, let's take a, a step back from both Marvel and DC, ride on a dark horse into Hellboy land. I remember seeing like previews of Hellboy. Never watched it. Well, when did you see the previews? Because it did get recently rebooted. It was like when it first came out. So the old one, 2004, yeah. I believe it was. Yeah. But I'll look up and have better information for the actual episode. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's that's completely outside of both realms. It's a beast all its own. First one directed by Guillermo del Toro, starring Ron Perlman and Doug Jones. Doug E. Jones. Um, so, some will players in there, too. So how many Hellboys are made? Three. Two of them are consecutive, directed by and starring all the people I just said. And then they just rebooted with, the fuck is that guy's name? Hopper. Come on. It's in there. I think I've told you before that in my brain, I like to treat it like that episode of SpongeBob where he looks in his brain. It's just a bunch of little SpongeBob's (laughs) running around in office. Come on. What's this motherfucker? David Harbour. Um, And honestly, as I'm thinking about it on the fly, it's hard to get to watch one movie, though. But we might do back-to-back weeks of Hellboy because it would be an interesting opportunity for somebody who's just saying, you know, I don't know much about anything. Definitely didn't hear about these guys. Not that you don't know much about anything. Let me rephrase that. I don't know much about the comic book world. I'm not trying to insult. Yeah, I think that might be cool. So maybe if you give me two picks, we might watch the original Hellboy and then the remake in back-to-back weeks. Let's do it. Let's also ask the listeners if they think that's a good idea, because it might not be fun to subject you to the remake without letting you enjoy the second one in the franchise first. You know, I just gave you a second in the franchise first, hoping that the Dark Knight would get you. But if you didn't like that, you're not going to like Batman Begins. So I think that that one's going to take a a rest on the back seat for a little bit. You sounded like Jack Nichols or uh, Clint Eastwood. Go ahead. Make my day. Oh, I was like, worse. I can't listen to this all down yes, for sir. two and a half hours. <laughs> Just wait. Yeah. If you didn't like that, you definitely couldn't stand the next one. Like people love to make fun of that now. <laughs> Where's the trigger man? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I always it's say like, you want to do. You need a, a piece Batman. of pussy, dude. Like you need a blowjob. Somebody needs to hit you off, Batman. Go over to collegehumor.com, all the listeners, and listen to Batman gets fucked, and we'll watch it when I'm done. <laughs> when we're done, because it's hysterical. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You, you you need you need a hooker in your life or something, Batman. Like release some of that, some Ooh, of that I, anger. Jesus, I tune that in movie. to Buds Bros and superheroes. Mm. I think if you want to do a real good one, <laughs> you got to start at the top and let it fade, and that's how it's really done. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, cheer up, Batman. He did take that, but at the same time, he was the smartest guy to go like. You know, we talked about in the Green Lantern episode of like, what, you think that you hid your cheekbones from me? I'm not going to know who you are. You know, if you were on the other end of a phone without hiding your voice, I would know who you were. If you were beating me up just because you had a mask on and you're like, all right, you're not going to do anything bad anymore. I'd be like, what? Bro, can you? So he did make a good point in the fact that Batman would need a different voice from Bruce Wayne. Right. And I enjoy the leap. And I think. That if it wasn't three movies long, the general population could get on board. But like you couldn't even make it through one. It it was tough. It was, yeah. I thought the cartoon was gonna be bad. Like I watched the cartoon last week, and at first I didn't like it. Like I said, and then I ended up really liking it a lot. But this, mm, I'm just not a Batman lover, you know. And joke, the Joker comes with that. I'm not a Batman lover, so I really don't think the Joker either, you know. No disrespect to all the Batman lovers. It is an interesting thing, you know, but I guess I just never thought about it. Not everybody's going to love Batman. Just like everybody don't like Superman, you know. I love him. Do you think that can happen? Not everybody loves Superman? I don't know. I mean, there's good and bad people and everything way shape or form so i don't i mean there's got to be people that would rather see batman in their life than than superman like you you love batman you have batman tattoos and sweatshirts and pops funko pops comics movies cowls all the movies (laughs) i want a batarang that'd be cool a who a batarang 
What's a battery? Seriously, what's a battery? It's what he throws <laughs> to like. Oh, knock like weapons a bat, out of like his a hands. bat, it's like a boomerang a with boomerang. the word "bat" in it. Now, in the early days, I think it, it was only used to like help him grapple, like you put it at the end of a rope. So this way, I don't think anything's ever come back to him. Okay, question, question. In the game, they did that. In the in the in the movie. It showed him flying one time, mm-hmm. but then also it showed him falling like he couldn't fly, and he landed on the ground like he couldn't fly. Yeah, he can't fly. Okay. He that can jump off question. tall buildings with but, a big game. And then soar? Yeah. Okay. He could soar and just glide. But he can't leap out of but a building But he can't just fly. fly from the ground up That's in the sky. That's why he had that fucking cool backpack. Come on, man. That scene That's... when he's getting the guy out of that thing, that was awesome. And shout out. Listen, guys, do it because I did. If you're crazy like me, the scene that we're talking about is when he's got to go and extract the guy who is very good with calculation. They're going to go and get him out of his building, and Batman has this quote-unquote gun. It's more of like a, a kind of thing. It's not like a pew, pew. Anyway, it shoots out jelly that's attached to a timer, and it's led to believe that that timer is an incendiary device. The jelly is explosive, and at a key moment, it blows the building, like the space of a building off, and he shoots up a backpack, and a plane comes and gets him out. If you're familiar with the movie, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you pause the movie on the time of the timer and then hit play and start a stopwatch, it's the same amount of time. They mm. don't bullshit you. Like, have you ever seen a movie and it's like, all right, we're going to get this going in 10 minutes, and then, like, the entire movie passes and yeah, it's four yeah, hours, right. and you're like, the fuck is happening? Right. No, this is real time. That's For cool. that scene. That's cool. It's the coolest thing, yeah. Go ahead and but, check it out because they do it. But, yeah, so we are going to check out Hellboy. That's cool. Never heard anything about it, good or bad. Never watched it, so. I won't be biased towards not or liking it, either one, you know. I do. I hope. I hope it's a good movie. I hope I'm not bored, and we'll see what's up. We will. Until and, uh, then, though. Uh, I'll always keep it real with you guys, and be safe out there. Yeah, Halloween is like we're saying, it's tomorrow, so if you're going out yourself trick-or-treating, I believe our wolf, our wolf, Tom, Tom Wolf. Governor Wolf. Governor Wolf. Tom Governor, Wolf. Yeah. Tom Wolf, right? We're it's doing our something wolf. like our wolf. <laughs> I was like, what wolf? <laughs> uh, uh, I, I wanted to say our governor, and then I was going to say Tom Wolf, and then I was going to say Governor Wolf, and all of it just came out. Our wolf. I think we're doing like secondhand trick-or-treating, or like there was a double door or something like that where I'm supposed to, in my house, it works perfectly, I will put a table at the end of my driveway with a bowl full of candy, I will stand on my porch waving to my trick-or-treaters like, yes, please have some candy. And that's what we're doing to stay safe. Well, what we're doing to stay, to stay safe, excuse me, people, is uh, we're going to hang some bags on the fence. And if they come, hopefully we can catch them coming and we can maybe have them sing a little song or just wave to them. Hey, thanks for stopping by and enjoy, you know. I love Halloween. It's one. It's my Halloween and Thanksgiving are my favorite two holidays. You know, I do. So I like me some Thanksgiving. Yeah. So you know, it's gonna be a good year, good time throughout coronavirus. Be safe, people, man. This shit is fucking people up. Yeah. But you'll hear from us well before Thanksgiving, because you'll hear from us next week around the same time. We hope that you uh, liked our our ghoulish little episode. Again, I think we have some different music going right now, but podcast Nick and editor Nick don't always agree. Like, I'll say something in a podcast about what the sound's going to be like, and it just doesn't happen because editor Nick's like, fuck you. Make sure to come back next week. We got some vlogs going like I was talking about, so, like, be subscribing, be liking, be Check doing everything. all of that stuff that, Check you know, ball. you do on the social medias. Until then, I've been Nick James. And this is Big Body Bigs, the can of pimp. We are Buds, Bros, and Superheroes, and we are out of here. And don't get that ass bodied. Rawr.